This is Geoffrey Villahardwe and welcome back to the Kingdom of Sweden campaign from 1648, 30 years of war. There has been a long time without an update. More specifically, there has been no update of the Kingdom of Sweden campaign this year. What happened was that in January 2016, YouTube announced uh, a series of new copyright claims. These copyright claims took effect retrospectively. In other words, video clips already published in the past were muted, and uh, the uh, YouTubers who had published some of those videos that now had new copyright claims on them were even punished for having done so in the past. Um, so I have been struggling to uh, put back together old video clips and in uh, the meantime I uh, had to stop the Kingdom of Sweden campaign which I'm about to start again. The Kingdom of Sweden uh, campaign that I'm playing here is based on the latest fully patched mode. We are in the month of December 1627. The Kingdom of Sweden's strength is growing, being currently 88% the strength of Austria. We were left with Wallenstein making an appearance before Dessau. Other imperialist armies are gathering in Saxony, but there is also trouble in the East. An army of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth under Josef Andrzej Gierowski has been besieging Marienwerder. The town is being defended by Blasius II, Holmes, Braunfels, and a relief force under Captain Johann Henrik has come to his aid. Our enemy picked the worst time in a raging snowstorm to attack our walls. Since they were attacking a gate that was carefully chosen so that we could not deploy there our artillery, we made our defense in the town. We placed the artillery at the edge of a large plaza. The enemy was forced to approach the plaza from the side streets and there it made a fine target for our artillery. Some enemy mercenary pikemen on amphetamines are marching as fast as they can, impossibly fast to support the uh, Polish horsemen that are hard pressed by our own pikemen. Uh, the enemy pikemen change their minds, they fall back, instead they are replaced by cavalry, Polish cavalry. The cavalry is being held up here by our pikemen. The pikemen are blocking the streets. Some cavalry attempts to pass by, but um, they are attacked on the flank by our pikemen. They have to come back so they don't get cut off. And while they're being engaged by the pikemen and held up here, they cannot charge our cannon, which is deployed further up at the end of this open field. Here's our artillery at the end of that open area. This presumably a parade ground or something similar. They are firing great shot at the cavalry that is engaged with our pikemen. Our pikemen are mainly on a side street so they are well protected from the great shot. Again the Polish cavalry tries to disengage and attack our cannon but uh, our pikemen are holding them in place.
The Polish cavalry are losing the fight, they are losing numbers, many of their horsemen have been slain, caught as they are between our pikemen and our cannon. In the meantime, on the other side, enemy pikemen have approached the end of the plaza. They are being held by our own pikemen and they are being supported by grenadiers. Grenadiers are firing fireworks at the enemy pikemen who are being hard pressed, even though they are very experienced. Our artillery keeps firing at the sides of the enemy cavalry and our musketeers are firing at them. The enemy cavalry is at the end of their tether and here they begin to retreat. They are falling back. They had enough. There is a lull in the snowstorm and they have seen the dead horsemen strewn about them, the dead horses, and that must have dispirited them. On the other hand, some uh, winged hussars have made their appearance. Now they have engaged our uh, pikemen with sword in hand. The winged hussars are a different kind of breed of horsemen they're going to be tough to deal with uh, fortunately we have grenadiers supporting our pikemen and of course the uh, cannons are firing great shot at the sides of the winged hussars being held up by our pikemen the hussars are decimated by our grenadiers The Hussars have been decimated and at last they fall back but our enemy has enough men to continue pushing forward and this time enemy mercenary pikemen come to engage our own pikemen. They have been hit by our cannon but the cannons keep missing and so they've made it out of our pikemen without casualties or with very minimal casualties. And a push of pike starts. Our artillery keeps missing. Our musketeers now seem hesitant to fire. They're probably worried they might hit some of our own pikemen so they are holding their fire here's one of them was fired and another one at last and uh, more grape shot is firing in the direction of the enemy pikemen this shot might have hit home more enemy soldiers are coming to reinforce their mates and finally our cannons have uh, hit the concentration of the enemy troops. Cannons at that time fired horizontal shots at the point blank range uh, up to about 300 or so meters in distance. When they hit a concentration of troops, they were deadly. As in here. So this is very much how it worked. In, uh, in reality, we have. Um, model the uh, velocity of uh, cannon shots from this period. I have put the little file in my in beta sub mod and the enemy hit finally successively by shots of artillery. 
they are being routed and uh, more shots hit home. The enemy is being massacred. They are being thrown off the ground. Limbs go flying. There is utter panic. So our enemy is approaching using the streets on the other side of the parade area and so they make an easy target here for our artillery and our grape shot so they keep being routed. On the other side over here we had grenadiers supporting our pikemen and the pikemen were blocking the street and the grenadiers were hitting the enemy with fireworks. And our enemy could not get through on either side. Yeah, the grenades are going off and our enemy retreats. Here is again our cannon and musketeers at the far end of the open field. Our mortars are hitting that big concentration of enemy troops on the left being held up by our pikemen. Mortars are preparing to fire another round. The uh, lighter cannons are firing grape shot. The uh, golden colored cannons are models for the leather cannon. They are not perhaps accurate. Nevertheless, they are firing uh, straight lead shot. The other darker looking cannons are falconers, they are firing grape shot. The grape shot had hit the enemy and they are retreating once again. Back to our view from our cannon that are about to fire another round. The streets are strewn with the dead bodies of our enemy, but they keep marching forward, they keep pushing for the plaza, they keep pushing for our cannon, they are determined to take Marie and Verda. Here's some enemy zweihander have engaged our pikemen, but they are being uh, murdered by our mortar fire and the other artillery fire. So the zweihander are not falling back. They are being decimated. And finally they retreat. But our enemy has men, they still have resources. So more of a 
enemy is moving this way, our grenadiers are about to fire at them. They may have run out of grenades, some of them are looking the wrong direction. Fortunately, hit by our musketeers, the enemy routes once again. There's some pikemen heading this way. And so there's another terrible melee this time with pikemen. Our grenadiers have uh, run off. They must have run out of grenades. And so the pikemen are now in a push of pike with the Polish pikemen. We still have artillery. So the enemy pikemen here have just been hit by a mortar shell and that uh, has spread fear. They have abandoned the fight. But there is more to come. Some more hussars come this way. They look already bloodied. They are probably the ones who were routed earlier. And they are also hit by mortar shells. So in the end, also the hussars were routed. Here's an enemy general caught in melee with some of our pikemen who have advanced. They are marching down slowly towards the gate. And uh, they got the upper hand of uh, that fight. The general was slain. Here another Polish unit was caught in a side street. They are being hit by grenades. They are about to rout. They are making a brave stand. So finally it looks like our enemy has given up. They have left Marie and Verde, although there are a few units still resisting in the side streets here, for example. Our pikemen are fending off some cavalry, and so it was a heroic victory. We only this lost 158 men. The, uh, the enemy was almost uh, completely destroyed. They lost 1,800 men. Oh, Seke Morta gained in uh, experience. A new general has been adopted, Johann Casimir von Velen. A West India Company guild has been uh, built in Dessau. We are now 92% the strength of Austria. And our general Ernst von Dobeln attacks. Kustrin, a small army was camping outside Kustrin. We attacked them, the enemy. The garrison of Kustrin sallied out, and the odds were against us. But of course, we have superior tactics. The enemy general, Captain Voichir, also was slain. These are now the final moments of the battle. I was micromanaging most of the time, so we had deployed in the Swedish formation. We defeated the first army, the second army arrived piecemeal. The uh, general of the second army, Johannes Maletius, who was slain, and his army left without leadership, was destroyed here uh, an enemy unit is being attacked on both flanks. 
and uh, the enemy is just sending scattered units here. There's here on the right some dragoons are skirmishing ineffectively. A unit of enemy pikemen has been uh, destroyed and the enemy is on the run. So our uh, mercenary Italian writers are chasing off the routing enemy. And the day is ours. It was a tough battle. We nearly lost half of our army, almost exactly half of our army. But the enemy casualties were twice as high. The two armies were completely destroyed. The prisoners were executed, so to speak, and so Kustrin now was undefended and was taken. Such is the fate of all who oppose us! My king! We shall slaughter them, my lord! Victory! Nothing can stop us, sire. The settlement has fallen. Take the spoils of war. Our empire is expanding, and uh, but it will be taken. And uh, the paws on the back foot. We've cleared up all that area from Polish armies, all of Prussia. And uh, there was another battle at Posen between Johann Barnea and uh, Polish general. Johann Barnea was, of course, victorious. Here are some, uh, uh, some views from that battle. Here the winged hussars have attacked some of our pikemen. All pikemen are holding their ground. The winged hussars just uh, look on. Okay, all of them has gone down. And another one is bloodied. Another one is dead. And at last the winged hussars flee. Our general chases them. Johann Banea in person. You just saw him there on the left. Here he is again, so the Hussars have been routed. Johann Banea has killed one of the Hussars with his sword. He's killed a second Hussar. And uh, here is some Polish musketeers that are also on the run. The enemy captain, Captain Gislav, has been this is a slain. That goes to only men of great virtue and valor. A clear victory for Johann Banea. So Johann Banner is now a great commander. He has gained four command points. Various useful buildings have been built up, including various merchant type buildings and uh, agricultural buildings, a warehouse, fairground, a Protestant community, repair of the star fort of Kustrin. We are now the largest faction larger even than the Kaiser and our strength is 94% the strength of the Holy Roman Emperor 
here are our stats we are almost as strong as the imperialists our diplomat here has become a master of diplomacy our diplomat Jan von Flandern brings the good news to Christian II the Prince von Anhalt to Bernburg about some attacks on the imperialists obviously the chronicle of March 1629 on the 6th of March Holy Roman Emperor Ferdinand II issues the Edict of Restitution by this edict the Protestants are commanded to return land and property they had appropriated since 1552 from former Catholic estates this repeals all agreements between Protestants and Catholics inciting unrest obviously the Protestants will not be happy it is the month of March of 1628 the Kingdom of Sweden is the strongest faction 100% the strength of Austria there is a small rebellion in the area of Lithuania near Cowan our general Bertrand Botnikal deals with that he attacks rebels and defeats them losing only 24 men and so he now feels appreciated and his loyalty has increased our king is fighting is another battle uh, in uh, around Pomerania if I remember well against some uh, Polish units he defeats them with a loss of only two men another battle in uh, Prussia in Poland a Polish general Jochen the Honest attacks a small town near Kulm uh, the battle ends in a draw we only lose 153 men the enemy is completely destroyed how can that be a draw the Turks are setting, sending more raiding parties towards Austria the south of Germany is once again securely in the hands of Baden edict of toleration is Stettin the Imperial Archduchy of Austria is now the strongest faction hostilities cease between the Duchy of Württemberg and the Duchy of Bavaria who knows why we are now at 89% the strength of Austria another battle in Poland the uh, Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth attacks one of our small towns there reinforcements arrive you can see them here I believe force they hold the ground the Polish cavalry charges are musketeers but they receive a volley in the teeth and the routed are pikemen on their case here are some uh, enemy melee infantry attempt to attack our pikemen they are being pummeled by grenades and they will eventually retreat another unit is retreating further down our musketeers are firing at the enemy from the walls as our enemy tries to attack the relief force they have to come close to the walls here's some uh, beautiful skirmishing and beautiful cavalry fight between our cavalry and the Polish cavalry Here we are harassing some uh, light enemy units. So we are shooting at them. They seem puzzled. Another attack. No move away. They hold the ground. They are making a valiant stand. 
One unit has been routed. If these ones here in the foreground are holding the ground, eventually they were routed as well. So now they are being chased down. It can happen that cavalry can defeat infantry, even in the 17th century. So it looks like the enemy is now surrendering. A few stands of uh, musketeers here and there are making uh, the best they can. They hear they have been routed. And there's more fighting. The enemy is in disarray. More and the soldiers here are routing, they are being taken prisoner. So the enemy armies in disarray are cavalry is chasing down the routing enemy. Oh, General Georg Lindbergh has triumphed. This is a glorious victory. The battlefield is strewn with the dead. So he has Georg Lindbergh, glorious victor, he only lost 67 men, he destroyed the entire enemy army. Some of our units killed more than 200 men per unit. So here is again the final score, the enemy lost 3000 men, Georg Lindbergh is now an aspiring commander, he has gained in command. And another one of the diplomacies, a master of diplomacy. Thank you for watching.